spring with Valor armor models in the dressing room. Noble garden themed cosmetics. Thank you for kicking off that hype trade, by the way. I appreciate that. Um, here it is. With a slew of new rewards uh, for Love is in the Air, we're looking at what the new Easter event is going to be. So uh, there is the Easter event. This is essentially what this, uh, this Noble Garden event is. And we're going to keep the, kick that off with some interesting new stuff like we did for Valentine's Day. Thank you, Alex, for the 100 bits. Um, we got a couple new, you know, flowery, gardeny sets, it looks like. Uh, this is very bustful. I like this set. Damn. Alex just throwing bits left and right. Happy Valentine's Day to me. Thank you, Alex. Jeez. Appreciate that. Um, could you imagine this right here, Transmog with Fearlath on the back? This would be a killer set, man. This would be a set that people would fear. The only problem is I don't have the weapons, so um, I can't do that. But I can wear the garden set. Uh, just looking at these, we got a couple different colorways of them. He had the yellow and the uh, the one we just looked at. Yeah, very cute, very nice. You want to garden your way through things. Again, this is part of the Easter event that would be coming up. They don't call it the Easter event, but that's essentially what it is. It's all the egg hunting and everything else. And uh, these sets, uh, they look fine. They look fine. Yeah, why not? Why not be a gardener and wow? RP your soul away. February 13th which is this current week, is a bonus event, Dragonflight Dungeon shit. So get your mythics done. This is essentially you accept the Emissary Quest in, Dra in uh, Valdraken, and you can get your bonus loot. Your bonus loot is a hero... My God. A thousand bits. Jesus Christ, Tweet. Thank you so much, man. Holy crap. Damn. Thank you, thank you. I appreciate that. <laughs> you shook me. Uh, get the Cache Emissary Treasure... Uh, gives you a heroic item level piece of gear. Holy crap, guys. Heroic level piece of gear. Hype train just went to level two. And uh, you will get that. Get it. Got it. Good. Moving on to the real important news. World of Warcraft's lead storyteller quietly left Blizzard, and now we know why. Now we know why. It turns out there was a massive brawl between him and Chris Metzen. Yeah, they went at it. Big time. Uh, there's even a, a story about how Chris Metzen ended up picking up an Alex Straza statue and throwing it against the wall. And had Chris not dodged Whoa, it, it would have actually hit him in the head. That's interesting, but I sure don't care. Yeah, well, no, you do care. You do care, because this is very dramatic, very... No, that's not what happened, guys. <laughs> the truth is... The truth is... The man just left because of remote work. Yeah. That's what it was. Nothing too scandalous, nothing too fancy. Um, when asked, you know, to comment on, uh, he if it had anything noteworthy to say about his time at Blizzard, or like the, the departure itself and what happened there, he said there was nothing particularly noteworthy to say, but uh, aside from that, he mentioned that, you know, part of the reason he left was he had been, you know, at Blizzard for a long time, I believe he said seven years, yeah, so he's like, to be anywhere for seven years is a long time, but mainly, he actually said that he wanted to continue working remotely, that was a factor. And as I'm a, I'm a big believer in the effectiveness of online team collaboration, he told me, but eight years is a long time for a single game. And while helping to architect WoW's story direction for several uh, years was challenging and rewarding, more and more lately I felt the itch to stretch my creativity in new directions. Yeah, so uh, he just wanted to work from home. And believe it or not, this is like a real thing, guys. Like, I know a lot of people at the company that I work for and other companies around America that um, they want to stay remote. And they are willing to switch jobs or switch it up or leave or go somewhere else to make it happen. Yeah, so uh, he wanted to stay remote. And that's the reason, at least the reason that he is giving. Now, there was the rumors that his creative, you know, path was clashing with medicines. And yes, they are going in a different direction than where he was going. Um, but it looks like remote work really got to him. It was a final straw, as they say. Uh, he goes on to say, I was fortunate enough to be able to relax and recharge over the holiday season. As for what's next, I'm not announcing anything yet, but I, I look forward to exciting things in 2024. Uh, if you're wondering what kind of things has Mr. Denuser written into the game, well, he was part of the Legion Expansion's Hunter Order Hall and the Marksmanship Hunter Artifact Questline. He did some original allied uh, race quests. The Ilganoth and Nazoth Whispers and Prophecies. That's probably his, his S-tier content that he created. Of everything that he did, those Nazoth Whispers and stuff were probably some of his best work. 
Um, he also did tons of in-game books, including those found in the Forbidden Reach and the Emerald Dream and Dragonflight. And he also did many scripts in the Stay a While conversations and cutscenes. But what Mr. Denuser is probably most known for and uh, most reviled for, I would say, is his uh, his Sylvanas storylines. Yeah, he's responsible for a lot of you know the direction Sylvanas went, and uh, not necessarily maybe how things played out, but he wrote a lot of the voice lines and the storylines and everything else, and more in particular. He's responsible for the Nathanos Sylvanas love story. Yes. On Valentine's Day, we're talking about it. Nathanos. Everything you love and hate about Nathanos, you can thank Mr. Denuser for. Um, he goes, he says, there have been many hints about their relationship between them, but I was the one to make it canon via the Dark Mirror short story. He said, and I wrote a number of in-game cutscenes, such as their banter on the dais during the demon attack at Vol'jin's funeral, and many moments between them in the battle for Azeroth. I wrote the loyalist scene in which sh they said goodbye at the end of BFA, and when he calls her, my love. And I wrote the Sylvanas message to the loyalist in the Forsaken questline, in which she hints that she's going after his soul in the Maw. Yeah, how did that work out? Yeah, this is, let the Thanos, his story, be the tragic tale for all simps. We call him Simp Thanos around here because at the end of the day, that man is still in the maw. Why is that? Because simps never win. Yeah. Turns out Sylvanas was in the maw with Anduin and you know, maybe they got a little something something going there. I don't know, who knows. But um, she hasn't rescued him yet. It hasn't been it hasn't been canonized yet. So Nathanos is still in the maw. Sylvanas may be still looking for him, maybe gave up, who knows, but uh, yeah, there it is. Simps never win. So don't be a simp or you'll just end up in the mall while your girl goes running off with some other prince. Uh, Denuser says he'll miss the narrative team he built at Blizzard and many friends he still has there. Find an earlier interview of Steve Denuser if you click that link there. I'll link this in the chat. You guys can check out this story. But there it is. Steve Denuser. Nothing too radical. There wasn't a fight or anything, at least by his accounts. Um... He was on his way, you know, he was kind of feeling tired, and uh, remote work got to him. Thank you so much for the hype train, guys, by the way. I appreciate that. Last but not least in the, nor in the news, we got DPS charts. That's right. DPS or charts. Let's check out what the current balance is of things. Overall damage here. Sub-titty rogue still at the top. Frost Death Knight. I don't know if Frost has been this high yet in the charts, but look at that. Frost DKs are sitting up there. Fire and Arcane Mage are in good spots. Fire, fire and Arcade Major are in good spots. No, don't worry about King Julian. Fury Warrior. Enhancement Shaman. Retribution Paladin. We know Paladins have been pumping every single raid we've been going into. These guys have been near the top. Havoc Demon Hunter. Much better for them. Shadow Priest Demonology. Thank you, Alex, for the 100 bits. And Outlaw Rogue. We see at the bottom here, I mean, Hunter, man. Beast Mastery Hunter is the best one. Oh, my God. Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. Yes, Beast Mastery Hunter and all the other Hunter specs are kind of low right now. I don't know how Hunter's feeling, but it doesn't look like they're in the best spot. So uh, we'll have to see how that goes for the rest of the... What's up, Birdie Viking? For the rest of the, uh, the, the cycle here. But right now, Hunters are kind of hurting. I'm not going to lie, which is weird. That usually doesn't happen to them. Uh, but let's look at boss damage. That's really what matters here. And we see Sub Titty Rogue still at the top. Unholy DK. Takes second place on, on boss damage. Fire Mage, Feral Druid, Rhett Pally, again, sitting. Enhancement Shaman. Best place I've seen Shamans in a long time. Love bringing them to raid. They enhance everything around them, and they pump. So, I mean, why not? Arms Warrior in a good spot. Frost DK also doing pretty good. And again, Hunter. Man, Hunter's falling off hard. Look at that. Marksmanship, Survival, and Beast Mastery. All bottom half. Bottom half. Wow. That's crazy. Um, we also see Windwalker Monk now doing Defliction Warlock, but I don't ever feel too bad for what Destro Warlock's in here. I guess Warlocks aren't too good in single target right now. Let's see who the big movers are. We got Affliction Warlock 19 spots down. Holy crap. I don't know if I've ever seen a single spec move that many spots down in a single run. Man, 19 spots down for Affliction. What happened to them? They got a huge debuff or something? Whoa, 19 spots down for Affliction Warlock, and um, 
We got, what's the highest mover up? It looks like seven spots for Elemental Shaman and seven spots for Enhancement Shaman. Blizzard showing the love to Shamans. And evidently shitting on Affliction Warlock. That is it for the numbers so far. We'll check in on these again next week.